Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this online training certification video. This video is on Isonus hardware, pure IP devices. Our course objectives are learn the advantages of the pure IP devices, understand the differences between the RCO4 and the RCO3 reader controllers, understand the various methods to power pure IP devices, and understand the accessories that can be used with the Pure IP devices and why they would be used. So what is Pure IP? Essentially, this is a reader controller, the RCO4. It's a network device, meaning the intelligence is at the door. Like the RCO3, it can store up to 64,000 card holders, 5,000 events, and 32 time zones. These are reader controllers, Mullion, Wall Mount, and Wall Mount with Keypad we can see there's been a drastic change in the form factor from the RCO3. Like the RCO3, it comes in two different versions. Your low frequency, i.e. 125 kHz standard prox, with Bluetooth models in each form factor. The Bluetooth can be used for a variety of things. The main item being mobile credentials on your iPhone and Android devices. Also, in the near future, we'll have a troubleshooting app that you can load on these devices and connect a Bluetooth to the rear controller to see why it's not connecting or whatever other issues it may be having. It also comes in our multi-tech, so low frequency, high frequency, i.e. 13.56 MHz or smart card range, with Bluetooth. It can be powered by PoE or 12 volt DC power. It is indoor and outdoor IP56 rated. Please note that if you are installing them outdoors, there are some extra precautions that you need to take, which we'll talk about in the installation module. The RCO4s can read the secure sector of certain MyFair Desfire EV2 cards. The tamper detection is now done via an accelerometer. The RCO3 had tamper detection done via a tamper sensor, in which case you needed to make sure that you installed the reflective sticker. The RCO4 just uses an accelerometer, so there's no more sticker. AES 256-bit encryption, both in the device, and you can turn it on between the device and the software. And it is still made in the USA. So what's the difference between the RCO3 and the RCO4? Obviously the form factor change. It's now a true wall mount on a single gang box, as long as you buy the wall reader. If you buy the mullion mount, then of course you would just mount it on a mullion. The new pigtail has been simplified and has only 8 wires instead of 12 like the RCO3. There are no more jumpers on the back. It is all software configurable. The RJ45 connection is now on a 6 inch whip. This makes it far less prone to moisture and other types of environmental damage. The RCO4 has a solid state relay inside instead of a form C relay like the RCO3. The RCO4 does not have any TTL outputs. If you still like the form factor of the RCO4, you can purchase one of our R1 readers, which is essentially the RCO4 without the intelligence and a weakened output, and connect it to an IP bridge to get the TTL outputs needed. The RCO4 does not have a serial port like the RCO3. The serial port on the RCO3 was very rarely used nowadays anyways. Most important, RCO4 is only compatible with pure access. It is not backwards compatible with DB Crystal. So let's take a look at the back of the RCO4. Remembering the back of the RCO3, we had a lot of jumpers and other settings that we had to set. Obviously, we've got a lot less of that now. We have our 8-pin pigtail connector. We have our reset button and Ethernet status LED. And then we have our Ethernet connector coming off of the whip. If we take a look at the new 8-wire pigtail, we can break it down into a couple different categories. The first category being first, the lock power, and second, your static 12-volt DC power that you may use for a request to exit motion. Note here that the red and the black wires are directly connected to the lock. Being that we're an access control device, the first thing we're going to connect is a lock. The easiest way to do that is to just connect your red and black from the reader controller to the red and black on your lock, using the proper suppression of course. Then you have your two inputs, your door sense input and either a REX or an AUX. 
The Rex or Aux essentially do the same thing. You can just set them to report differently in the Pure Access software. The third part is your EDK. You'll need an EDK in a couple different scenarios, which we'll talk about later on. So here we have an RCO4 at the door, and we have a network switch with PoE. We'll run our CAT5E, CAT6 wire between the two devices. We'll take our pigtail and run them up to a junction box on the secure side of the door. From there, we'll wire out to our peripheral devices. The RCO4 uses standard PoE, or the 802.3 AF standard. You can plug it into a PoE Plus port, or the AT standard, but it will only ever draw a maximum of 11 watts. In short, you can plug it into a PoE Plus switch, but you're not going to get additional power from the reader controller. You'll be provided 12 volt DC 600 milliamp maximum out at the door between the electric lock and any peripheral devices. The competition cannot match this. They'll claim to have higher power outputs, but there will be an asterisk next to it, saying that you have to then deduct your proximity reader, controller power, and other things from that power, which then brings it under the 600 milliamps. You can also use this to power other 12 volt DC devices out at the door, like request to exit motions. When you need additional power, you can also power these by 12 volt DC. So in this case, we've got a power supply, either at the door or back in the network closet somewhere where it's centrally located. The input must be 12 volt DC. The RCO3 could accept 24 volt DC under certain circumstances. The RCO4 cannot accept 24 volt DC at all. The reader controller has a minimum draw of 12 volt DC 150 milliamps. The lock relay is rated at a maximum of 600 milliamps at 12 volt DC. This is very important. If you need additional power, even at 12 volt DC, you will need to use an EDK with the system. So why would you use a power supply? There's many uses. You may need it for fire alarm integration for your magnetic locks and other fail-safe locks. You may have higher powered locks that go over the 600 milliamps maximum that we can provide. You may also want to use this in securing magnetic locks. If you need additional power while utilizing the traditional network architecture, you can use a PoE Plus splitter. Either the switch will provide PoE Plus or you'll use a mid-span or injector. Out at the door, you'll put in a PoE Plus splitter device. This device will split off the Ethernet and the power from the line. With PoE Plus, or the 802.3 AT standard, power splitters can provide 12 volt DC at 1.8 amps. You will need an EDK or an Altronics RBSN if the lock is over 12 volt DC 600 milliamps. Remember, the RCO4 has a solid state relay meaning that it will either provide power or not provide power, lock or unlock the door. This solid state relay will only ever provide 12 volt DC 600 milliamps maximum. Again, this can provide additional power while utilizing the traditional network architecture. This can also be used for securing mag locks with an EDK. We'll talk about this in the next slide with the exterior door kit. The exterior door kit or EDK stops tampering with lock power. Out at the door, you'll wire the pigtail to one side of the EDK and the lock to the other side of the EDK. Any valid unlock signal sends a secure signal to the EDK. The EDK determines if the signal is correct, and if it is, then it unlocks the lock. It's also needed when there is an external power supply for the lock. Exterior door kits are very important with the RCO4. The RCO4 has a solid state relay. Any time that you need an external power supply, you need enhanced security on the door, or you need to go over the 12 volt DC 600 milliamps maximum, you will need an EDK. Just like the RCO3 and the IP bridge, the RCO4 has to be protected from back EMF protection. These are solved again just by using a simple diode that comes with the reader controller. Inrush protection. The RCO4 does not directly need an inrush suppressor. The RCO3 and IP bridges still do need the inrush suppressor. Isonus does not recommend connecting a fail-safe lock directly to the RCO4. 
This is because if you are powering the RCO4 by PoE, if you lose PoE or the RCO4 is unplugged, that failsafe lock will become unlocked. For best security with a failsafe lock or a magnetic lock, an EDK and PoE splitter or power supply is needed for that enhanced security. Now let's review our course objectives. We talked about the advantage of the Pure IP device. Some of the main advantages are the solid state relay. It's a network device that can be powered by PoE, so all you have to do is run a single Cat5 v Cat6 to the door. And it also has Bluetooth on the device. We talked about the differences between the RCO4 and the RCO3 reader controllers. We talked about the various power methods to power pure IP devices. Standard PoE or 12 volt DC. You can plug it into a PoE plus switch, but you will not gain any additional benefits from that. And you cannot use 24 volt DC to power the reader controller. And we talked about the accessories that can be used with the pure IP devices and why they would be used. Mainly the EDK. You will need the EDK if you need a dry relay, you need 24 volt DC or any other type of external power, or if you go over the 600 milliamps that the reader controller can provide. Thank you for your time and watching this training module. Have a fantastic day.